The following podcast is a little fiery, but mostly peaceful. If you're an automaton, turn away now and shelter in place. If you're a Catholic ready to renew your prescriptions of red pills and white pills, stay tuned. Greetings once again and welcome to Catholics Aren't Zombies. I'm your host, Chris Munir. Catholic men should get six-pack abs. People are going to think this is superficial, but hear me out on this. Catholic men should get six-pack abs at least one time in their lives, and I'm going to explain why. Before I do that, though, before I say anything about this, this is for guys, but let me help the ladies out real quick. Women do not need six-pack abs. Women, if you ever get your body fat checked with the skin calipers and you ascertain what your body fat percentage is, anything below 15% is too low. Women do not need to be super lean, okay? And I know this is what the society and the culture is telling you. It's really disturbing to see how many folks think that these emaciated, super lean women are, are somehow attractive. You know, it's really actually part of this scheme to get women to look like men, to get them as lean and, and jacked as possible. Don't fall for it. It gets to where you're so lean you can't menstruate. You don't have big enough hips to have children. All sorts of problems like that. We used to know this. used to be common sense. Nobody nobody ever questioned conventional wisdom like that before. Women, if you need a guideline on where your body fat should be, probably between 20 and 35% is the sweet spot. Women, you don't have to be super skinny. Rejoice. Here's a guy that's telling you, in order to look good and be healthy, you don't have to be skinny mini. You don't have to be ripped Jane like in the stupid movies. Now, don't take that the other way, though, because I know it's going to happen. How do you know you've gotten too big and too out of shape? All right, well, if you start to look like a walrus or a manatee, all right, you got to dial it back a bit. No manatees, no walruses. It's not going to work, okay? None of that fat acceptance garbage either. It seems like we all all fall into one crazy extreme or the other. There's got to be a middle ground there, ladies. Again, the rest of this is going to be geared towards men. Oh, I don't know. Everybody's going to say this is super superficial. Why in the world does this matter? Why do six-pack abs matter? Well, it doesn't, actually. Okay, it, it really actually doesn't. There's no real utility whatsoever to the appearance of six-pack abs. In fact, really, six-pack abs are just the abdominal muscles when there's not a bunch of fat in the way. But that's what I want to focus our attention on is that how much fat do you have? And six-pack abs are just a good way of ascertaining that. You know, you might be able to tell based on, you know, how many veins you got showing in your arms too. But the visibility of the abdominal muscles for guys can really tell you what's going on. This is how you know if you've done physical fitness the right way at all. It tells you whether you've been slacking or not. So if you look in the mirror and you look down and you see a flat washboard's midsection, hey, you know you got you know you're doing pretty good. You're not probably not committing the sin of gluttony too much. You're not chowing down on garbage with one too many cheat meals. Whereas if you look down and you see a flabby spare tire, all right, well, maybe you ventured into zombie mode just a little bit. And you know how we are on this show. We don't do the zombie mentality. That's the whole damn point. And with six-pack abs, I'm going to explain how to get them. But it's easier to obtain than you think. This is not some crazy calculus of all the, you know, the, the crunches, the sit-ups, and you know, tons of running or jogging or any of that miserable garbage. It's mostly to do with diet. So it really does tie back into fasting and some of the other things that we talk about in Catholicism quite a bit. 75% of getting lean or having that really aesthetic midsection is just diet. Eating the right stuff and not eating a ton of it. But there are broader spiritual implications. Six-pack abs can also, they can also be a test of vanity for a guy. Once you've gotten to that point where you've achieved that, that really awesome physical appearance, well, it's going to serve as a temptation, and you've got to control it, you know, whether you resist the urge to show it off or not. This is important. What this doesn't mean is that in order to avoid that vanity, you should just let yourself go and be- become a big slab of crap. No, you should get yourself in shape. And then resist the urge to show off. So here's where, you know, can you resist the temptation to go around shirtless in public or showing it off to a bunch of people? Can you resist the urge to do this this fruit loopy thing that some guys do or you see it on the internet where they're shaving their chest, they're shaving their midsection? It's like, what the freaking heck? Talk about men just turning themselves into women by doing that. 
Maybe some of the folks that do it, they struggle with same-sex attraction. Maybe not. But see, if you spiritually can get yourself in a great physical condition and then basically hide it, basically, you know, dress modestly because women are not the only ones that need to practice modesty. If you can actually do that, it's very telling of where you are in terms of spiritual maturity. So there's that aspect of it. So what are the real tricks of the trade in terms of getting six-pack abs? Well, like I said, diet's about 75% of it. But the other real big thing is to focus on compound lifts. Squats and deadlifts are probably your best friend here, especially squats. When you activate your entire body and you do that downward momentum, you, you put a lot of pressure on your, your spinal muscles, your back muscles, but you also really get those abs going. I've seen guys who they've, they've even gone so far, they've gone too far with it, and they're going to give themselves a hernia, maybe an umbilical hernia, right there in the middle of the abdominals because they're training it so hard. You obviously don't want to get that carried away with it, but you can see where it's not all the crazy crunches and sit-ups that really gets you the results. It's those manly compound lifts. So the same ones that are going to make your quads and your hamstrings really strong, that's what helps your abdominal muscles. So you don't have to be that patsy that's you know trying to do 200 sit-ups a day. You don't have to do all that crazy targeting stuff. Everybody always overemphasizes the targeting stuff when they're in a the gym. You know, there's a little bit of room for that. You want to get every muscle possible, get every you work every possible angle. But honestly, if you stick to the basic bread and butter compound lifts, the squats, the deadlifts, do as many things standing up as possible, and you will really work your abdominal muscles. There's some targeting stuff to be done too. But in terms of the physical component of it, keep it simple and you'd be surprised. I can't stress enough, fasting is critical. Caloric intake really is the name of the game. I know at one point it became really fashionable to bash the idea of calorie counting and to divorce fitness completely away from the quantity of food that you would eat. And a lot of it does have to do with the quality of food. You need to eat whole foods, eggs, meat. I've talked about this before. But how much you eat really does dictate it. You have a baseline amount of calories that you eat per day based on your weight. If you want to lose weight and get the six-pack abs, get lean, you have to be in a caloric deficit. Anybody who's worth their salt at all in the fitness industry knows this. There's no escaping it. There's no gimmicks. You can do the stuff like keto and the intermittent fasting and all that. It's basically the same thing, though, when you get right down to it. It does come down to getting yourself into a caloric deficit more days than not. Now, I also recommend people do have a cheat meal or a cheat day once a week to sort of, you know, mellow it out because you do need to recarb and psychologically it's a good thing. But fasting and getting yourself in a caloric deficit, this is so important. If you can't do that, you will not achieve it. You'll never be all that fit in the first place. Uh, before I continue, you might be wondering, how lean do you have to be to have six-pack abs? Most guys, it's going to be single-digit body fat percentage. And I would say, based on what I see, the men you see you know, on a normal basis are probably somewhere around 30%. Uh, they're not particularly lean. Guys, in order to be you know, in the respectable range, I, I say they need to probably get below 20%. But if you really want to get fit, you're probably looking at somewhere around 5 to 7% body fat, maybe upwards around 10, just to give yourself an idea. And you can determine this with the skin fold test, with the calipers. If you go to any gym, they usually they got somebody that can do it for you. That's how you know. But don't get too bogged down in that, honestly. The best way is, just look, just use the freaking mirror. Take before and act after pictures, and you'll be able to tell where you're at with things. Your eyes and your, in the mirror are not going to lie to you. Whereas you might take a test or something or get on a scale and it's manipulated somehow. So don't do all that. And I really do think that getting the six-pack abs, although, like I said, it doesn't have any real functional utility or anything, I think it can be a very good sign of spiritual discipline on some level. We forget this, that most of the health problems that we have would vanish if we just embrace Catholic tradition. So for physical problems, fasting and the pain and mortification of exercise, that's what gets you lean, guys. We know this. For mental problems, go to confession. For emotional problems, Eucharistic adoration. Cry in front of the Blessed Sacrament. That tends to work. Some people cry, some people don't. But you know, if that's what you got to do, go cry. Financial problems, practice detachment. Figure out why you've got so many recurring debits. But you see what I'm saying is that on the physical level, you really do have to embrace the pain of acute suffering and sometimes chronic suffering in order to get the results. The acute suffering, that's going to be your workout. And I don't encourage people to do a really long workout. Don't spend an hour jogging on the treadmill at a medium pace. That's the other thing, too. You want to go hard 
fast and intense for a short period of time. And that's how you train. That's how you get lean. Hypertrophic training. Sometimes you hear people talk about our high intensity interval training. Look those up. I'm, you know, I can do a whole episode on either one of those. I don't want to go too far into it. Research that a little bit. Don't be the one that spends two hours in the gym beating your head against the wall. Short, painful. That's what you want to do. Fasting, now that's going to be, you know, in, day in, day out. You got to work with that a little longer. That's going to force you to discipline yourself. That's going to force you to be disciplined basically every hour of the day. Do you grab that snack or not? That might be a little more difficult for some people. The bottom line is don't fall for the Protestant idea that a fit body doesn't matter and doesn't have any implication on you spiritually. It does. We know that all these things go together. Protestantism, once again, is being a zombie. Zombies don't work out much. Now, you don't have to fetishize over health, but neglecting it is not okay either. We know that we have to address the physical stuff because it impacts our salvation. If we allow, allow ourselves to be slothful, gluttonous, if we don't put at least a modicum of effort into making ourselves physically respectable, again, for guys, we're talking less than 20% body fat. That's kind of the benchmark there. You shouldn't be so out of shape that you can't even bend down to touch your toes. We all know this. Common sense. You look in the mirror, you'll be able to tell. So men, consider making a fun goal out of getting six-pack abs at least once. I'm not saying you got to make it, you know, the be-all and end-all of your entire existence. There are folks that do that. There are folks that spend all their time agonizing over what they look like, and they get into all kinds of body dysmorphic problems. Uh, they're the ones that have all these body image issues, and, and, you know, we think that's all a female thing. Like, sometimes there's guys that have that problem, too. Don't go over the deep end with it. Don't go nuts. But it's a good little physical gauntlet to give to yourself. You, you might even consider that Exodus 90 program. That's pretty cool. Uh, I've not really done it myself. I it's kind of on my list of things to do. You got to have a few guys to do it with, but consider giving that a try, you know, research Exodus 90. So if you do one of these things and you get yourself super lean, you I think you're going to notice a really great improvement in your flexibility, your mobility, you'll have more energy. You might go too far with it and get too lean to where you you feel tired all the time. There's that problem. So don't get yourself like 3% body fat. Don't get yourself gross or you know, like these uh, bodybuilding contest types, you know, those folks are really pissed off and for a reason. You got to have a little bit of body fat on you, otherwise you might lose your mind. You know, your brain needs fat too, so keep that in mind. This is like the growing the beard episode, more of a fun one to think about, something to give you an idea. You know, maybe this is something you can do for Lent. We've got Lent coming up, or this might release right in the middle of Lent. I don't know when I'm going to release this one. But, yeah, have fun with that. Don't neglect your body. Ladies, remember, you don't have to do like guys do with workout supplements and all that crazy stuff to get super-duper lean because it doesn't look good on you. It's not healthy anyway. Find the virtuous means in between emaciated and walrus, and you'll probably do all right. Dress nicely. You know, that's the more important variable for you. But other than that, hope you enjoyed the show. Deus Volt. Buy my book, Caesar Vacantism. Check out all my other episodes. We should be on at least 10 or 11 by now. Have a good one. Cue the music.